Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on variceal bleeding. So in my previous video about the portal hypertension, I've mentioned that there are a few collaterals that could occur as a complication due to the portal hypertension. And the most clinically important collateral is the gastroesophageal varices formation. Because if this esophageal varices rupture, it can result in a potentially fatal hematemesis where there is vomiting of enormous amount of blood. So the strongest predictor for the development of varices in patients who have liver cirrhosis is by looking at the hepatic venous pressure gradient. If it is more than 10 mm mercury, there is a high risk for development of esophageal varices. So the normal hepatic venous pressure gradient is around 1 to 5 mm mercury. And portal hypertension is defined as a pressure gradient that is more than 5. So if, if it is more than 10, then it has a high risk of formation of varices. And there are two subtypes of upper GI bleeding, where we can divide the cause into variceal cause or non-variceal cause. In this video, I will focus on the variceal cause of upper GI bleeding. So when do we suspect for a variceal cause in UGIB? We ask the patient if they had any previous variceal bleeding, or another way to ask is asking whether he or she goes for regular bending or, or GDS screening and bending. Is there any history of chronic liver disease? Or we can ask for risk factors such as chronic ingestion of alcohol, or whether they have any underlying hepatitis B or C. Also, we can look out for any stigmata of chronic liver disease. The management of this varicel of the varices can be divided into three main groups, which include the active varicel bleeding, prophylaxis, or chronic management of the varices. So first, we look at the management of an active varicel bleeding. So if there is active varicel bleeding in a hemodynamic unstable patient, we have to resuscitate the patient by maintaining their airway, keep in view for intubation, and also assess their breathing. We can give high flow oxygen and maintain the oxygen saturation above 94%. Circulation, where we establish two or more large ball cannula, IV cannula. And we also monitor the vital signs, pulse oximeter, ECG, and urine output. Lab investigations, for, for example, group cross-matching of the blood, full blood count, renal profile, coagulation profile, and others can be done as well. And if it is indicated, we can give blood transfusion for the patient. So it is usually indicated if the hemoglobin is less than 7 gram per deciliter in severe hemorrhage. Other management include pharmacological management, which includes IV broad-spectrum antibiotics for 7 days, such as ciprofloxacin or ceftriaxone. IV stomatostatin or IV ultratide can be given as well where their mechanism of action is their splenic vessel constrictor which will decrease the portal blood flow and hence decrease the portal pressure so reducing the portal hypertension IV omeprazole at the milligram bolus and IV vitamin K can also be given in some cases such as those cirrhotic patients with coagulopathy and Depending on the condition, in some cases we can give IV telepressin, which is a synthetic vasopressin. In severe variceal bleeding, we protect the airway, and an instrument that we usually use is the Sangstecken black mold tube, also known as Minnesota tube. So this is the picture shows how we insert the tube, and you can see we pass the tube through the nose into the esophagus and until reaching the stomach. So. There is the inflated esophageal balloon and also the inflated gastric balloon. Whereas the second picture shows the instrument, the sense taken black mold tube. So this tube, we maximum uh, put it for 24 hours while temporarily deflating it after 12 hours. This is to prevent pressure necrosis within the esophagus. And this tube is used for patients with uncontrollable bleeding. So you can see this tube, there are four, it consists of a gastric balloon, shown over here, an esophageal balloon, and third is a gastric opening, and the fourth is the esophageal opening. Whereas for definitive management includes endoscopy, 
which can be used to confirm the diagnosis and also give definitive management, such as sclerotherapy or variceal band ligation. And ligation is superior to sclerotherapy in the initial control of bleeding. And there is also fewer adverse effects. Another definitive management is the transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, TIPSS, where there is a placement of the stent between the hepatic vein and the portal vein. Emergency shunt surgery can also be done in some cases, which some of the examples are splenorenal shunt, portocaval shunt, which is joining the portal vein to the inferior vena cava, mesocaval shunt, which is joining the superior mesenteric vein to the inferior vena cava. So besides the acute active variceal bleeding, the second part of management is for prophylaxis. So for prophylactic treatment, it includes band ligation, three weekly until the varices are completely obliterated, and the pharmacological management includes non-selective beta blockers, such as propanolol. It helps to reduce the risk of bleeding and also slow down the progression of those small varices into larger ones. So we can also grade the esophageal varices according to the size. So there are three gradings. The first grading is defined by small straight varices and not disappearing with insufflation. Grade 2 is when the varices are enlarged and tortuous, occupying less than one third of the lumen. And grade 3 is if it occupies more than one third of the esophageal lumen. So the grading also helps to predict the risk of variceal hemorrhage. And the third part of management would be the chronic management, which we can start the patient on an ablation regimen, which is endoscopy with initial ligation or sclerotherapy and also subsequent endoscopic monitoring and repeated ligation or sclerotherapy if required based on a case-to-case -case basis. If the patient bleeds again and there is felt ablation, then we can consider surgery, such as, such as the shunting I've mentioned just now. So that's all for the management and that's all for this video. Thank you.